just like a lot of people involved in this sport, they've been involved in many aspects of it. And this gentleman's no different. This is Smokey Shemp. You started out your career as a driver. Tell us a little bit about that. I started out at the old Heidelberg and South Park Speedway as a race driver, and I drove up until like 1978, then I'd become an official. What made you get out of driving and into being a race official? I was driving a race car opening night at Pennsylvania Motor Speedway, and the guy they had running the pits didn't have everything the way it should be, so I was helping him. And then the next week, the owner of the car I was driving calls me on the telephone and says, I I didn't know you quit. I says, I didn't know you fired me. He says, well, read the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. There's a big article in there. You're the new head, Pitt Stewart. I said, well, that's news to me. So then I called at that time Bob Sandman, that was the general manager, and he says, yeah, I want you to be the steward. Did that pay better than driving a race car? I never took money from the people I drove. I used to tell them put the money back in the car because I was privileged enough to drive the car that I never thought to take money off people. Where all have you acted as a race official and what jobs have you had? Well, I was flagman for about five years, six years at Motordrome before it went to asphalt. I flagged at Latrobe Speedway, which is, well, it was Schmucker Speedway. I've been a head official at Lernerville Speedway for the last about 15 years. I've been a head official at Pennsylvania Motor Speedway since the day it opened in 1979. Roaring Knob, I helped get that started. Just about every racetrack in the area I've been an official at. In all your years of involvement in motor racing, is there one memory that stands out amongst the others? Well, was when I was a flagman, Lynn Geisler and Ben Miley, they were leading the feature, running one and two, coming out of the fourth, turned down the front straightaway, and Lynn got into Ben and put him up on the wall and he tore me right off the flagman stand. I was knocked off the flagman stand, was broke down, and I was hanging upside down on the fence. I can see why that's something you'd remember the best, but I don't really think that would be my best memory. Like I said, there's been so many different things. When I lined cars up at Lernerville, I got run over by a sprint car and actually had an imprint of my body in the racetrack. I would take it that being a, a flagman or a uh, on-track official is almost more dangerous than driving a car? Really and honestly, yes sir, it is. Especially down on the, on the racetrack. You have to have your eyes everywhere because some of these guys, they get a little bit hot when they get spun out and that's what happened with the sprint car. He got spun out and he, they fired him and got him down the back straightaway. And he came down the front straightaway and I pointed to him and told him, you know, he was on the tail and all of a sudden he lost it and I was walking off the racetrack and he just, the car just followed me right off and he ran over me. If you weren't involved in racing all these years though, how would you have spent the time? I'm into classic cars. I own three different classic cars and I'd, I'd probably be fooling with them. What kind of cars do you have? I have a 78 Indy Pace car Corvette, 84 Choo Choo El Camino and I have a 76 Landau Chevelle. We'd like to thank you for taking the time to talk to us and on behalf of the racing community I want to thank you for your involvement and your commitment to the sport all these years. Uh, it doesn't survive without people like you. No, I do it because I, it's just the love of the sport. I've been doing it 50 years. And that's why most of us are in it. Yep, that's the only reason you should be in it.